Hello guys, it's Julia here, and today in this video, I'm going to be doing the Windows 11 downgrade experiment again, but this time on actual hardware. So I pulled out an old laptop which isn't even compatible with Windows 11, but it let me install anyway. And then I decided, hey, let's downgrade it to Windows 10 because it's meant to run Windows 10 anyway. So, as you can see, I extracted the Windows 10 21H2 ISO, and I'm adding a modified setup compat.dll file to the sources folder. Now, what this file does is basically when you run the setup, it bypasses the, you know, not being able to keep any files, and it lets you continue regardless, which is perfect because I don't have to use the compatibility trick, which doesn't even work on newer versions of the setup because last time I had to use a 1703 setup, and using an older setup with the newer ISO or newer WIM is just not a good idea. So basically, I just found a way to make the newer setup work, so that way this will go a lot smoother. Well, we'll see. So you can see we're at the making sure you're ready to install, and it says ready to install, win install Windows 10 Pro, keep personal files and apps, and this is a Windows 10 21H2 setup, and it's letting me continue after I replace that file with the modified one. So we're gonna see how this goes and see what it does in this video. So I clicked install, so now we're gonna let it install, and then I'm gonna show you guys the results once this installs. If you haven't seen the last video I did on the downgrade experiment, I'll leave a link in the description, but that one I did on a VM and I did it differently. So I just show here that this is indeed Windows 11 and I did keep some files on here, so that way we could see after this quote unquote upgrade if the files are kept or not, but they should be because of the trick I did which works better than compatibility, so let's see. Thank you. 
So as you can see, the same thing happened with the actual computer where it just showed a black screen after it finished installing, meaning that in the video when I said I thought it was VMware tools because uninstalling it seemed to have fixed it that one time, turns out that's actually not the cause because it's happening on this too, same results. And obviously my laptop does not have VMware tools, so pretty much this was happening on there too. But then I realized, why don't I just move on to the next step, which I found a way to fix the UWP apps. Cause I don't know if you guys know, they're stored in an SQL database. I found that out when I was making that last video because it said an SQL error. And that's when I realized, oh, the UWP apps are actually stored in that database. There is a way to rebuild the database you have to boot into the recovery environment and you have to delete some files in there, which basically those files would tell Windows what apps are installed and what apps are not installed. And by deleting them, you're able to actually reinstall those apps again with some commands when you boot back into Windows. The reason you have to go in recovery though to delete those files is because it could cause a BSOD if you do it within the OS, because probably because it's trying to, you know, use the apps maybe. So basically though, after you delete those and then you boot back in the OS, you run some commands and it will restore all of the apps and they will all function. I did this in a VM and they all worked because I went back to that VM, which I still had because I hadn't deleted it yet. And I was able to fix the start menu and all the stuff that was broken previously. So that's good to know that you can rebuild that. I'll leave a link in the description. It was a comment in the post, which the post also says how I did the setup compat trick as well. Even though it does say downgrading 11 insider to 11, it still works with um, downgrading 11 to 10. You'll just have to rebuild those apps, which is in a comment, which I'll leave. So here you'll see that I'm booting into the recovery environment because I'm going to delete those files. So that way we could boot back in and hopefully it'll load, which I didn't know if it would or not because I wasn't sure what was the cause of the black screening. I still was unsure, but I decided just to do this anyway to see if it would make a difference. So you guys will watch me do these commands and then boot back into the OS. I had to do a sign on the partition because for some reason it wasn't mounting the partition when I booted into the USB. Now I did notice that this happened on the VM2 when I tried to boot the ISO, it wasn't mounting the drive for some reason. I don't know if that was a side effect of the downgrade I did, but it's kind of strange. But anyways, you'll see me deleting those state repository files because those are the files that you need to delete in order for this to work. So I guess we'll see if this boots. So you'll see that I'm gonna close it and we're going to reboot the system and we're going to see if that made a difference or not. So it's logging in as you can see there. And you can see we got the choose privacy settings and it appears that it worked. So apparently it was one of the UWP apps or something causing it to not work the entire time. I'm not sure what app was causing it in particular, but one of the apps I think was causing it to not work. So it was kind of strange because Explorer was completely bricked, but you can see all the files are still here from before the upgrade or should I say downgrade so now I'm gonna run those other commands and you'll just watch me running those other commands
So as you can see, those commands did fix all of the UWP apps, including the Microsoft Store and Settings, and you saw the icons appear on the taskbar while I was running the commands for the UWP apps. Now I'm just fixing the desktop background since that didn't carry over like it did in the VM. You can see Microsoft Teams is there because it carried over from Windows 11. Then I'm going to fix the font on desktop info because it did uninstall my custom font for some reason. Not sure why, maybe just a side effect of the quote unquote upgrade. Now I show the explore.exe and windows.old showing that it is indeed the Windows 11 build number. I also run a winver to show that this is indeed Windows 10 version 21H2. Now I'm going to run some commands to show the upgrade dates because you can actually do that with some PowerShell commands. And as you can see, it does show we upgraded from Windows 11 as you can see there in PowerShell. And you can see our file that we typed on Windows 11 is indeed still intact. You can see that the UWP apps are still working, including Windows Terminal. And we're going to run an SFC scan now to fix any corruption because it's good to do this, especially since we really weren't technically supposed to do this. Please don't try and downgrade your computer at home like this. It may not result in the same thing as mine did. Now I'm going to fix some of the taskbar icons because it did disable them because in Windows 11 it's different. So they weren't, you know, enabled by default. And then I go and I change a few other settings that need to be fixed because Windows 11 is different than 10. So there's a ton of things that aren't enabled when you do this. So then I just fix that. Windows security was freaking out a bit, not sure why, probably because, you know, it just didn't have its updates, which I am going to run Windows updates after I, you know, run the SFC and DISM commands. I close OneDrive because, you know, who needs that? But you can see those are the programs I had on here. You can see that UWP apps like Mail open correctly. And you can see that settings is working. And now I'm going to run the DISM restore health command. So that way we're able to fix any more corruption that might exist in this OS. So you can see it did say it completed successfully. So since that completed successfully, we're now going to run our Windows updates, which it did glitch out a bit when I was running Windows updates on here but it's always good to have it, you know, fully updated. It'll also fix some other things too that might have bugged out when doing this. Now note that there is a bug where it may tell you to restart your computer even though it's still installing updates. Do not restart because that could break it more. And you can see that it glitched out there and reloaded for some reason, probably rechecked again but then I reboot to do the updates after they are both pending restart. That bug exists in Windows 10 2004 and up. It's nothing to do with the experiment I did, it's just a bug in Windows 10. It happens in 11.2 from what I've seen as well. 
But as you can see, I'm fully up to date on the latest dot number, although they're about to release a new update and there probably already is one by the time you're seeing this video. You can see it still kept the Windows 11 background, I'm not sure why. And I just disabled Teams and all that stuff from startup that I don't need starting up. I'm going to probably uninstall that somehow. Then I check for updates again just to ensure the system is fully up to date. But basically by doing this, everything seems to work. You can see Edge is even working. Every UWP app seems to work. I don't seem to find any issues doing this, although I still don't recommend doing this at home. Even though it kept all the files, it's still not a good thing and you may get different results. But for me, the results were perfect with this method I did. So anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Have a great day and bye bye for now.